Um, so a very good morning, uh, good afternoon, everyone. A very warm welcome um, from myself, uh, Kate Ayak, and Sandy Hammer from All Seated for today's uh, session, which will be looking at virtual reality. Um, I think most of you are very familiar um, with the process, but we will put you all on mute uh, to avoid disturbances uh, because we will record the session and I will send that session recording to you um, afterwards. Um, can I encourage you all to use your chat box? There's some nice questions coming in now. Just let's all know you're here. Um, we'd love to uh, have part any questions, pop them in there and Sandy will be taking questions throughout the session. Um, let me hand over Sandy, I think now to yourself um, to today's session. Thank you. Thanks, Kate. It's always great to be with um, you guys. Um, we're really happy uh, to be here. And um, I think that the nice part of, um, you know, of us knowing IAC already for so long is that, you know, we just all feel quite comfortable and please feel free to um, discuss anything, sending questions. Kate's going to monitor it and uh, I've told her that she should interrupt me. Uh, if something isn't clear or you want me to go over something, we're a small group, so we can take time to uh, dive into this uh, in a little bit more detail. Um, so for those of you that don't know me, just very, very quickly, um, I'm the co-founder and CMO of All Seated. We have been around since 2012 um, and we've done very well in the United States. Um, we've had a really uh, fun time there. We've enjoyed the market. We've uh, slowly now coming into Europe, which we're loving. Um, we've got an office in the UK, we've got an office in Germany, and um, we're really enjoying understanding now more and more of the European demands. And we've actually got quite a few properties on board and it's, it's been really a lot of fun. So we have a floor planning system, just in case anybody doesn't know who we are. Uh, we're a floor planning system with a lot of extras. Um, and we, cater to um, some of the very big names and some small names and a lot of different diversity, but we're not going to go into that. I'm here to talk about tech and tech is what I love to talk about. And we need to talk about tech because um, in the last six months since the COVID, we have um, accelerated in tech about five years. So what was meant to be a roadmap of about five years, including video chat, including virtual, hybrid, VR, AR, everything that we've been seeing in a roadmap for the next three to five years suddenly has accelerated to all come forward in about six months. And, you know, for us as a technology company, it's great, but it's a little bit of a mess. And, you know, we invested heavily in virtual reality. So I want to start a little bit with that to understand a little bit where it's going to go and, you know, what we've learned from that and you know, I want to talk about that. And then we're going to go and talk into a lot of other things as well. Um, so virtual reality, as some of you might know, is um, been around for a long time. It's not new. Uh, we sit with a development team that are from the gaming industry. So because they're from the gaming industry, it was a very easy, easy uh, fit for us that when we understood a couple of years ago, uh, when we saw that Facebook bought uh, a company called Oculus, we understood that this was going to be a lot more mainstream. It wasn't just going to be about um, gaming industry. Okay, it's been very heavily known in the gaming industry, virtual reality. But, you know, it was used if you had a very uh, powerful computer. It was expensive. It was not really for the regular people like you and me that we were going to start investing in all this technology. But when Facebook made that investment uh, a few years ago, we understood that you know, this is, a, this is a technology that is really could transform our industry and could help us tremendously. So we invested, uh, we put a lot of money into it. Uh, we brought out a, a product uh, in virtual reality and we started to do very well with it. But it was actually, it was an interesting sale because um, people understood that for the first time they could actually take their property on the go. So you would be able to put on the goggles you'd be able to see your property, you'd have that immersive experience, and you could actually carry around your goggles because when the Oculus Go came out, it was $250, it was wireless, and it was a very easy experience. It was relatively easy experience, let's put it that way. So we did some research and you know, the, the truth is, over the years, we saw the research, we saw that the investment in VR and AR, you know, Microsoft, Google, everybody was putting billions of dollars into this, 
Uh, people were talking about that this was going to be a you know, multi-billion dollar industry. Um, and it was looking to be a very exciting uh, opportunity. And then bam, wham, uh, COVID happened. And well, I don't need to tell you, but pretty much nobody's going to share a pair of virtual reality goggles. Doesn't matter how quickly you clean them and how, you know, how easy you take care of them. Nobody's going to actually share the goggles with you. Um, but an interesting thing did happen is that um, Apple came out and they announced um, that they've been working very heavily on their AR VR headsets. Um, so we then understood that, okay, so Apple's still talking about it. Uh, you know, people are still investing in it. So, you know, what are we going to do with it in between and how can we adapt and how can we actually decide where the future of VR is going to go along with AR and what has it really done for our industry uh, during this period? So one of the things that uh, we did see was actually um, Google, uh, not Google, sorry, Facebook reported uh, huge uh, sales in the Oculus because everybody sitting at home wanted a pair of, pair of uh, VR goggles. They're actually now have the second version, which is called the Oculus Quest. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's a much more powerful uh, pair of goggles. It's got two controllers, which actually make it a little bit easier because we're used to balancing ourselves with two controllers. Um, and the visual um, processing is faster and really, really good. So the Oculus Quest is now uh, the newest one in the market and they sold millions of them during this period, which was very interesting to see. It's not necessarily going to be a shared item, but for $350, it's still an affordable item that people are buying for themselves, um, which, was, which was encouraging because we really do see uh, the world moving more and more into these worlds of um, wearing the goggles, wearing the glasses. Obviously, when Apple brings these uh, glasses into the market, which by the way, nobody really knows what they're gonna look like. These are a lot of just prototypes that people have been messing around with. They've kept it very, very secretive, like Apple does. So nobody actually knows exactly what it's gonna be like, but we do know it's gonna be like glasses as opposed to a contraption because the computer part of it is gonna be in our phones. So while Oculus and a lot of other um, uh, companies are building the heavier pieces is because the actual computer is part of the actual goggles. But the computer that's going to be with Apple is going to be in the phones. And actually, that's the most exciting part because the glasses will be light. They will be, um, you know, easy for us to maneuver and wear. And it will be hooked up to our phones and to our processors from our phones and our Wi-Fi's from our phones. So actually, everything will be, as Apple always does, much easier and uh, it's going to be very exciting to actually discuss that. So um, I'm, assuming, I'm assuming most of you know the difference between AR and VR. Um, if someone doesn't know, just mention it in the chat and I'll, I'll just give you a quick description of it. Um, and Kate, you can let me know. Um, but the idea of um, AR and VR is, is very similar into the effect that it gives us an immersive and an in-depth experience. I think that's the best way of describing that. So the visual depth is, is something really cool because you actually can see and feel um, the depth, which we can't really do in a 2D environment, right? We're in a 2D environment now, and all we can really do is see what's straight ahead of us. Uh, it gives us the immersive experience, it gives us a 3D dimension, and it gives us movements. And I think that one of the things that we might have learned over uh, the last six months, this is what we're really lacking today. We have a world that has overnight changed into a virtual world. Um, we've all become accustomed to Zoom, which, you know, again, that's one of the reasons it's accelerated technology uh, speeded us up five years ahead, because now instead of uh, a few million people that understood what video conferencing was, it's pretty much like 80% of the population around the world understand what um, video conferencing is. And for any type of virtual experience, you're going to have to know how to click on that link and whether you have to put in a password code or anything to do with that, 
um, you know, we've already fixed that boundary and we have no pains and all of that has gone away. So, you know, that's the good part. The bad part is, is that we're lacking something. We are lacking, um, you know, what is it that we're lacking? Everybody's starting to hear about the words now, um, virtual fatigue, right? There's this whole uh, world of us now saying that we're just exhausted, which is, you know, the numbers are never real anymore. Most of us are registering so that we can get the video and we can listen to it in our own time and fast forward to the pieces that we don't want to hear. You know, we've already gained uh, a lot of um, insight in how to manage the virtual world for ourselves. And, you know, I'm definitely one of those people as well. But um, the questions ar arise, and I think that these are a couple of questions that I, I want to just spend a couple of minutes on. And these are the questions about you know, yes, we've been affected by the COVID. We've definitely, um, you know, had our industry has been turned upside down. And actually, there's been an there, until a few weeks ago, there was an entire halt. There was an entire stop um, of any hotels, of any conference centers, of any events of any kind happening. Um, and everybody span into the world of the virtual world that that could or understood it um, to run the content you know at the end of the day it's not really helping the hotels or the conference centers or truthfully even if I'm having a wedding which I was meant to have too but let's not get go down that path um, so in regards to that uh, we've had a it's had a major effect on on the industry in in so many ways but one of the things that we have to move forward with is the understanding that our behavior um, has to change with the time. So, um, you know, what are we doing that's different um, than the, the pre-COVID? We have to do things that are different. We are, you know, as a hotel, you're making all the safety standards, you're making sure that the social distancing's available, you're, everybody's got to wear masks. You are changing the way that you are working. Um, there's no question about it. Running an event as a planner, as a producer, you are now going to be changing the way that you have been working in the past. Our behavior is going to be changed again, period. There's nothing really to discuss on that. It is what it is. Um, and now we have to understand what is going to be the next stage. And this is where I want to just explain to you a little bit about how we see that the world has changed, how now we have to um, talk a little bit about how tech can really help us. And truthfully, I know this is a bit blunt, but if you're still using a PowerPoint presentation or you're just showing somebody your property with a website, you're not really doing your best. It means that you haven't really understood what technology can do for you. Um, you know, when I write technology can save the world, I'm obviously not talking about all seated or any of the software technology is going to a much greater level with Bill Gates to save the world. But I mean it into the point of view that we can help our industry. There are things that we can do with technology that can help our industry become smarter and become um, able to run events. We can run some of the events. As the regulations are opening up and some of the areas are giving us permission to run events, I don't think we should be thinking that, oh, it's only 30 people or 50 people. I just can't run an event for that. We have to think beyond that and we have to think how can we run that event and what technologies we can use to run that event to make that event really bigger. And that's some of the things that I, I want to talk about a little bit now. So first, we need to get your house in order. OK, you need to get your property or whether you're a planner or whether you're a producer or whatever you're running, you need to get your house in order and train and learn and start thinking of how First, we've got to sell remote because you've got to bring in the business. Let's talk a little bit about selling remotely and bringing in the business. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about once we've brought in the business, how we're going to use technology to help us run that business. So today, you can have a 3D. One of the things that we learned about VR, which I mentioned earlier, is that the immersive experience and the three-dimensional feeling has given us a very different way of seeing things. So even though we're not necessarily putting on a VR goggles, we can still, I'm actually gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm gonna turn my video off. I am still here because I wanna have better bandwidth and 
um, it's totally okay if you don't see my pretty face. So I'm going to share that and then I'm going to go into, I want to share with you uh, my screen now um, on this one. So bear with me a minute and then we'll come back to the presentation. But I want to show you a few things that you can be doing in order to help yourself with technology now. And I, you know, I am showing all seated, but there are other companies out there. It doesn't have to be us. I just want you to be aware of the fact that there is technology out there that can showcase you in a very different way than a PowerPoint presentation or something that you're not necessarily doing your best with. And I think that this is very important to understand because I really want you to understand that we have to use the technology to the fullest now. And this is something that I'm gonna keep on pushing. Okay, so I'm gonna take you to the Conrad Hilton in, um, in New York. It's um, one of their um, trendier hotels of the Hiltons. And um, most of you might know this, you have your 2D floor plan, you do all your layouts with the tables. Today, we've given you a physical distancing tool so you can you know, immediately put on the physical distancing tool and it will tell you that all of this is not okay for physical distancing, but I'm not gonna set it up today for the physical distancing. We'll get to that if we have time at the end. It's not about that. It's about um, just showing you how you can visualize your space now and what more you can do with your space to show it in a, in a much more interactive and engaging and experiential way than a PowerPoint presentation or even really what's on your website. Um, and this is something that we have to change our behavior. We have to change the way that we've done things in the past. Um, and this is what's gonna give you an edge and this is what's bringing you into the 21st century. Um, now, if you had VR goggles, you would have literally, you'd be dropped into the Conrad Hotel and you'd be able to uh, really almost feel that you were actually there. But this is not a, sec this is not a bad second option. Okay, the second option um, is allowing you to move. So it's giving you an experience. Um, the engagement is a lot of fun because we have uh, developers that are gamers. So they built it a lot like a game. You know, it's got a lot of gaming technology um, movements in it. So you can keep moving around and exploring. And, and with that, you then keep your customers intrigued you know you keep them involved which are you know very important at these times when everything is such a two-dimensional world and it's very difficult to really show and explain you're almost holding that picture and you're like showing them you know you can walk here you really can walk here but obviously in a picture you can't walk anywhere so this gives you the experience and you know i'm not going to go into this in in a lot of detail because i really want to just show you a lot of things but you can change all the different types of chairs here. You've got many uh, different options. So it doesn't, you can do the linens, you can set up the tables. Uh, th there's so many different things that you can do. I don't wanna uh, go into all of that detail. But on my checklist in my presentation, this was one of the um, things that you can do. You have to have a 3D, 360 environment. Um, 360 camera is good, it's better than nothing. The difference with a 360 camera is that if you're having just a 360 camera image, it's not dynamic, you can't change anything. You can't really have, um, you can have the experience, but you can't have the interaction. You can't have the uh, constant flow of changing the chairs, changing the linens, putting the square tables in, putting long tables in, showing them a totally different setup every two minutes, which is, you know, which is what really keeps them heavily engaged. Um, and ultimately will close a deal for you. But this is for sure something within a two, 3D world, 360 world is a given. Now, if you wanna go and explore something more, you can go to the next level where you can do your video conferencing now, which is all seated has a connect where you can actually, turn, we can turn this on and then I can send you a link and through the link, you as a customer now, can come in and share that experience with me wherever you are. And again, these are experiences that you're giving, you're engaging, you're 
you're getting them involved. Today, it's about getting people involved. If we keep bringing everybody into this 2D world that we're exhausted with, um, we're gonna lose this level of involvement, engaging, and that's actually gonna be very sad because to some extent, this is gonna be a little bit of our new world. And it's not a bad world. It's, it's creating a lot of efficiency for us. It's creating a lot of unnecessary travel that people don't really want to go traveling around the world to choose a venue. Okay, let's be honest. We don't really want to go and get on a plane, even when the vaccine comes and when things are back to normal, our behavior is going to have changed. And if our behavior has changed, that means as a, as a property or as a planner, or as a producer, we have to change with it. We have to adapt and change with it. And we have to make ourselves available uh, for that. So, your client will get the link. They are going to be able to have that same experience that you're showing them in the all seated uh, product. Um, so video conferencing, whether you're doing it with Zoom, whether you're doing it with inside the platform is a must. OK, uh, again, it's not exciting if you're going to just show them your uh, PowerPoint presentation or you're even going to show them your website, which, you know, you can have the prettiest website in the world with beautiful pictures. But again, it's only showing it in a very 2D environment. And that's a shame because technology is built there for you and technology is already out there. And that, again, is um, it's a shame if you're not using it. So again, in your website, you can include what All Seated has, which is the widget. And it allows you to have that, allows your client to have that interaction uh, where they can walk around, experience, immerse themselves, and feel something as opposed to just looking at a pretty picture. And again, we gave them the abilities to have a few. Uh, don't tell the plaza that I put wooden chairs in their lobby. I don't think they'd be very happy. Um, but you get the idea that they can play. And at the end of the day, this is what causes uh, the engagement. Uh, just the fact that they can play and they can have fun and then they can send this picture to a friend and you can immediately um, have some dialogue about it. So anything that we're doing now today in this world is very, very important to have it in this uh, interactive uh, experience. And, you know, I just have to show off a little bit because we can do amazing scenes. This is a model. It's, that means that you can change all the furniture here and have anything, any setup you want. You can put a ceremony out here for your clients. But the fact that technology has grown so far, it's up to you now to take that to the next level. There's only so much technology companies can do if clients at the end of the day, you, you being our clients, are not interested in using it. But I think that you know having that ability to have a beach setting or have this magnificent balcony and this view, this is uh, the Hudson Yard in New York, um, it, it, you know, this can sell everything that you have in a minute. You don't really need to go there. You can see everything from um, a computer, save money, save time. And all these things will become very valuable in the end uh, to how uh, we showcase our properties today. So Kay, I have been yapping away. Do you have any questions before I, I go on to the last stage of this? Yes, Anybody I mean, got any so questions? We do have a quick question in from Miguel in Portugal. Um, obviously using VR for site inspections is really like the present future, uh, but don't you think that we need more instant interaction with salespeople? Yes, uh, for sure. I, I am, I'm not, I, listen, I hope and pray that everything goes back to normal and everybody will be coming to your properties again and everything will go back to normal. But still, you have the ability to get tremendous more leads and see many more customers before they make that final choice and walk into your property. So that when they walk into your property, the deal's almost closed. And that's what we're trying to do. I mean, you know, let, and you know, if you're from a property, how many times did you, did you ever think that we would close hotel rooms 20 years ago through the website? Did you ever think that we would uh, buy all our clothing without ever walking into a store again? Did you ever think we'd buy a pair of shoes without trying on a pair of shoes first? So this is how worlds shift and this is how technology helps those worlds shift. People are buying uh, real estate properties 
for uh, millions of dollars without ever going into the country or visiting it, but they, they know they want a place in Spain or Portugal and they love the, the, what they saw and they're going to buy it. So things have changed. I, I do believe that there is the personal contact and we're having personal contact now by having a chat. I'm not sure that somebody will put in a credit card and book this without having a chat with you, without hearing your voice. But things are going to be changing, you know, before people are going to be running, even when the vaccine comes, people are still going to feel uncomfortable getting on those planes. And even when people get back on those planes, they're still going to want to see a site inspection before they actually get on that plane. Our behavior is going to change, you know, it is. And, uh, and I think it's, it's not such a bad thing that we are um, able to reach so many more people these days, which is what technology has given us, right? The fact that we've got now the Zooms and the Jeans and the Google Hangouts and all these hundreds of companies, you know, we're able to communicate with millions of people around the world, which we never really thought we would do uh, six months ago. Great. So I hope, that, I hope that answered a little bit. Yeah, sorry, Miguel's just come back. He meant in the same instant interaction, but more on a virtual perspective. So, so yes, in the let, let's talk a little bit about that because I think that that's where we start seeing uh, the future. Okay, and I, I do want to talk a little bit about the future. So let me just uh, stop sharing my screen, um, and I want to go back to the presentation so that we can go back to seeing the presentation. So. Give me a minute. Uh, hang on a second. Are you seeing my screen, Kate? Hello? No, Sandy, no, I'm not I'm seeing my screen. Okay, cool. All right, great. So everybody, now you can see it, right? Yeah. Okay. So Miguel, this is where we talk a little bit about the future. And, you know, we see it in many ways. It's not one way. This is not, the future is not gonna hold us in one direction. Uh, the future is for sure going to hold us in, a, in a many, many different directions. We believe that VR, AR, and, I, and IA, which is the um, artificial uh, AI, not IA, AI, uh, will be seen um, very, very different um, in the future. And we're talking about two to five years, which is not a long time. It could be even accelerated even sooner where you're gonna be as comfortable with these products like your mobile phone. I mean, you know, all we have to do is think back 15 years ago, and some of us are old enough to think back 15 years ago when we, when we were scared of the mobile phone and we had fears about it and we were not sure how to do it. And when the smartphones came, a lot of us, my, my generation, were like, no, 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 I'm happier with my Nokia. I don't, I, don't need a, I don't need that. But the minute we overcame that fear, we became addicted to it, right? They became part of our, our world and we're addicted to it. There's no question about it. And the same is going to happen with VR, AR and AI. They are going to be part of our world, just like we are with the mobile phones. Um, virtual events will be the new norm and not a Zoom platform. And hybrid events will be the new norm. And I'm talking about this as extensions of in an in-person event. I am not saying one bit that live events are not coming back. I'm not, I don't even want to put it down on paper because I don't believe it. Live events will be back and stronger. There is no question about it. There is absolutely no question about it, but our behavior has changed over the last six months. It will change stronger over the last nine months, over the next three months, which will be nine months and possibly one year. And then there really will be no going back. It will be an extension. And this extension is what we're going to be calling, and you've already heard it being spoken about, which is the new norms. It will be an extension. Virtual events, some people will decide that, you know what, they're very happy with a virtual event. They don't need any more uh, that experience uh, of a live event, okay? And I think that a lot of those virtual events are going to have to change from a Zoom platform because otherwise, the virtual events will die. They will not be able to continue with a Zoom platform. People, they, they will if you're having an hour conversation like this, but I don't consider this an event, okay? This is a, a topic of discussion. This is like having an hour telephone call. At the end of the day, we can't, have a we can't be on the telephone having an eight hour conversation. We'll all be exhausted by it. 
So Zoom platforms and uh, platforms that were really only built to have a meeting have adapted very fast to have virtual events and they were not built for a virtual event from the beginning and the adapting to become that virtual event platform is not going to happen and many other products like <clears throat> I don't, don't want to mention any names but any of those registration products that have put together like feeding live uh, material which is really just what this is material or me speaking live into a um, into the fact that it's now they're calling it a virtual platform are also not going to survive into the virtual events meaning a three-day conference meaning multiple floor uh, multiple breakout rooms um, you know keynote presentation trade booths all of that that obviously can't exist within that zoom platform but it can exist in good technology that's being built and that is has a strong understanding of events but we think here in All Seated, hybrid events is really where the future lies. And I actually think that this is something positive. I know a lot of people are scared about it because they're all saying, well, you know, a hybrid event, we don't want 30 people and then we don't want everybody being virtual. But I guarantee you when that 30 people turns into you are being allowed to have 100 people, those 100 people will come. When it turns into 500 people, that will come. When the vaccine happens, and it's an event for thousands of people, those thousands of people will come. But the one thing, the behavior of that one thing that technology has shown us and taught us is that even with an event with a thousand people or 10,000 people or a CES of 100,000 people, there really could be tens of thousands of people around the world that want to join in. And we're never gonna go and buy a ticket and have an airline ticket, couldn't afford it, was not interested in traveling, or that person that only could afford two conferences a year can now be part of going to five conferences a year or 10 conferences a year. Companies that wanna have their employees enriched with good content are gonna be queuing up to go sending their employees to all these events that are out there. Why not, you know? So the idea of the in-person event that will come back to its full capacity, there is no question about it, will now always have a virtual element to it, which we're calling the hybrid, where the, the world of the live events with the virtual event will mix. And it will be the people that in the, the technology companies, it will be those technology companies that will understand how to make those worlds mesh into one. And when you're gonna be wearing one day in the next two to three years, the VR goggles or the AR goggles, and you're going to be working, you're going to be an in live person walking in that in live event, and you're at home with your glasses or your goggles on, and you're in that same event, you are not going to know which world you're in. You're going to lose the concept of what real reality is. And that is exciting. Don't look at that as being scary or unnerving. Um, because the worlds have changed and that's just the way it's, it's an exciting opportunity. You're going to be meeting people from all over the world. You're going to have, uh, simultaneous translations. You're going to be talking to people in, you know, in Russia, in, in China, in all over the world. You're going to, you're going to grow. Your businesses are going to grow. Your monetization offering is going to grow. So many things are going to grow. Just even the fact that, you know, people from all over the world that never visited your space before are going to be visiting your space in the virtual reality world. They can visit your space or in the, even in the 3D world that I just showed you in All Seated, they can be visiting your space. So don't be scared by this. There, there are going to be learning curves, but just like we had to deal with the mobile phones and just how we had to deal with, you know, learning how to digitalize a, a floor plan, let's just say. There is going to be uh, a new world out there and it's going to be an exciting world. So um, I don't want to scare everyone. And this world of us sitting with the goggles on is going to be there. The world of us sitting, you know, maybe with more modern goggles is going to be there. And it's an exciting world. And um, I'd love to have more conversation and questions. Um, you know, let, let's discuss it. Sound good? That was great, Sandy. Has anybody got any questions for Sandy, um, Colin, as we start to draw to a close? Pop them in the chat box if you have. Um, I've just got one that came in, uh, Sandy, asking about 
you know, how we sort of make monetize off events uh, moving forward, especially in the virtual? Yes, absolutely. So, you know, in the, in the virtual world, the, um, the, money, the monetization is going to be um, the fact that you can sell so many more tickets. So you're going to have your price ticket of people arriving in the in-person world, and that's going to be still your regular pricing ticket. And, you, you know, you have 500 people or 1,000 people there. That's going to be your ticket. But now you've got the option to invite another 10,000 people from around the world. That's going to be a different price ticket, but it's definitely going to be a price ticket because you're still giving them an experience. You're still giving them uh, an opportunity to engage, network with people from all over the world and listen to good content. Um, and these are things that we're going to learn over time, you know, how to present good content. I'm not saying this is, you know, if you have a whole day of just watching slides, this is not necessarily going to be considered good content. Um, you know, new speakers are going to come up that know how to interact. They're going to, there's going to be new technology that will be polls that will have um, different types of things that will interact with you while you're giving your presentations. The entertainment world is going to have to know how to get involved in the virtual world, which it's learning to do. But there are elements that are going to be very, very exciting and you are going to be able to monetize uh, within, within that world. That's great, thank you. Any more questions yeah. for Sandy? So I, I really um, would love you guys to, um, you know, experiment, go and, go and play, go, go to the plaza in New York, their website, go to their meetings. Uh, I think it's under meetings and convention and go and play with the plaza in 3D. Understand what, the, what can be given to you now. This is even available now. I'm, I'm talking a little bit about the future when I talk about hybrid. I think we've got a long way to go to make those worlds all seated is building something. We are excited. Uh, we're not ready yet to talk about it, but we are building. Um, and we're building something very unique, very, very different um, that we think will be able to answer both worlds of the virtual and the in-person. We do believe that the hybrid is a very exciting new world. And uh, we believe that we can bring answers to, to make both worlds happy, so to speak. Um, and, I, and, I, and I really do want you to, uh, the first thing everybody needs to do is just to get their house in order, get your properties in order, get your properties with the best technologies that are out there. Train your staff on remote selling, give them a little bit of new direction, give them uh, the ability to, to book more and more business for 2021. Things, things are going to open up. There's no question about it. Vaccines are being spoken about. We are not going to be in this situation forever. And right now, use your, your social distancing tools to allow you to understand the best layouts for your, your system. You know, we're happy and we're here to, you know, to advise and talk to any of you that are having concerns. You know, we've been asked to be advisors in some of the very big companies and you know we, we've been very comfortable to do it uh you know we, we don't talk about things that we're not comfortable or we don't give advice on you know how you're running uh for example the safety procedures and all of that within your properties but when it comes to events and seating them we really know a lot about it so we'd be happy to share any of that information with you um and and you know we're happy to have give you feedback on what we've learned that's great, Sandy. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, and I'm sure we're all agreed that we're excited to uh, hear of your news when, when that does become uh, available. Um, yeah. Can I just remind everybody? Yeah, excellent. Thank you. Uh, just a reminder um, that the session has been recorded. Um, so I will forward that to you all after the session. Um, and obviously, if any of you have any questions or you want me to connect with Sandy, um, then I can do that um, as, as well. Um, we now have a bit of a break for webinars. We don't have anything now till early September, um, but do not worry. We have an on-demand page now on our website, so you can go along um, to that and pick up. Um, there's about 15 sessions that you can pick up at your leisure and have a look at those um, on all areas um, for venues. Um, and with that, I wish you all a very pleasant day. Keep safe uh, and we'll speak to you all again very soon. Thanks, Sandy. Thank you.